Welcome back everyone and welcome to the Naked First Enchanter again. Um, I'm excited. I don't know about you guys, but um, we are going to record this episode and then we're going to um, start streaming or start recording uh, Dragon Age 2 and Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, I am still trying to see if I can uh, get like a save file for BG3 um, but it says it's not supported at this time to go to a different storage area because otherwise uh, BG3 takes way too much storage space um, along with adding more mods or to the games that uh, for the series that I'm planning on doing because everybody knows that Veil Guard's coming out and I'm super excited. Um, I don't think we'll be done streaming these three Dragon Age series by the time it comes out, but as soon as we're done with the Dragon Age series, we're loading up Veil Guard and we're playing it. Um, I have to warn you, like BG3, if I don't know like what I'm really actually doing in the games, I'm kind of inconsistent in what I want and indecisive. It's just who I am. I like, you know, playing and changing things around, companions, getting to know them, um, to where Dragon Age series, these are going to be like my four companions until we get to a certain area and then I'll switch and flip them around but um in general you know I like certain certain ones and if I'm playing a certain character there's certain you know certain characters that I need to come uh come with me for approval rate but I like I said I'm excited um we're gonna get this going and Let's talk to the naked first enchanter. Ah, there you are. <laughs> we have your brought Miriam and begun preparations for the ritual. We can start any time. Uh, so only one person can go through. Yes. We haven't sufficient lyrium at present to send more than one mage into the Fade. Um, are you sure this is the only way? It only works because the child gave himself to the demon willingly. If the demon takes over the host forcibly, we must slay the abomination. We have only enough lyrium for one attempt. I hope you succeed. Such a young lad deserves better than execution. Uh, do you have any last-minute advice? It truly depends on the manner of demon. It sounds like a spirit of greed and desire, one of the more powerful in the hierarchy. It will likely engage you in dialogue and tempt you with an offer. Avoid it. Making deals with demons never turns out well. Let's do this now. I'm glad we decided to take this route. This is really the best option. Very well. Who will go into the Fade? And we're gonna take Win. Then let us begin forthwith. Oh, also too, anybody watching Horizon Zero Dawn with me? Um, we are still playing that. Do not worry. I was able to get that saved into the storage file just fine. Um, so if I have off on the weekends and I'm doing anything, um, I'll be recording that. Okay, Arl. You there? Have you seen my son? I can, I can hear him, but I cannot find him. This blasted fog has me turning in circles. Try to get through to the Arl. You are in the Fade, my lord. A demon has you trapped. Demon? Fade? Is, is my son in danger? He is, but I will do my best to see that all of us emerge from this unscathed. Trust me, my Earl. Yes, I, I, I trust you. We must help my son. But I can never find him in this fog. You must find Connor. Please, I beg you. Mm, we're gonna help him. Don't you worry. Is anyone out there? As you say. As I say. 
Bryn, this is your show. This is your show, girl. Who are you? Are you the one that made father ill? Tell me now! Oh, I forgot that he is like that. Ask where the demon is. Come, child. Tell me where the demon is, and it will soon be all over. Fool! You won't get near her. I won't let you. Good job, Wynn. Though Wynn is a more of a supporter, um, healers and supporters are just as good as damagers, and um, I can do multiple things. You know, help you! your crew. You're the one making father sick. Healing, you know, Unless and who exists in the sight of the maker, and. Uh, can, you know, Why do you keep hurting damage me? themselves? Why are you trying to stop me? Listen to me. I am just trying to help. I will not speak with you! Trespasser! I will drive you out! This is really loud in my ears. I feel like I'm yelling over the sound. Okay. Um, Curse this blasted darkness! Why can I see nothing? Everybody's talking and I don't want to talk. Um, As you say. So, I find that this is part for Free and Connor is very um, telling. Like, you know, they talk about, you know, uh, possessions and abominations and stuff like that um and that we're doing this only because connor gave himself willingly to the demon well don't most of um you know mages don't they normally give themselves willingly the demon convinces them and whatnot um i mean there is ways to go ahead and you know free them from possession um but you know that you never know every abomination and every um possession is different but in general most mages give themselves to demons and i don't see why they couldn't resort to some of this i know it takes a lot of mages or um lyrium but that's why the dwarven suppliers supply the circle but I think this is another form of control, just like with the Templars, where the Chantry holds the leash between mages and Templars. Um, be interested in your guys' opinions on that, um, on what you guys think from, from that opinion. All right, and we'll probably get Father more Wonders in depth in the other series me, as well. Trapped within my web. All is as it should be. Why must you interfere? Reason with Entity. Because you have taken a child and trapped a good man in this place against his will. No. It is time for you to go now. Do not persist or things will go very badly for you. We are unafraid. Good job, Ryan. Oh, 
All right, final battle? Final battle, yeah. Morgan, really? Sorry, my dog. Very well. No more illusions. Now we meet face to face. <coughs> you see my true form and stand in my domain. It is here I am most powerful. And yet I have no wish to engage your power, nor should you be so eager to engage mine. Perhaps we should converse instead? Force the final competition. There will be no discourse between us, demon. Alas, that is sad. Very well then. If you wish a battle... I do. You will have it. Let us see if your power matches your boldness, creature. Oops. As you can tell, they were different shades. So if you've never noticed that by playing, um, a little game tip. Come here, sweetie. Stop barking at stuff. Lay down, girls. So it is over. It is. Connor is his old self. He does not seem to remember anything, which is a blessing. I suppose we will need to send him to the Circle of Magi's Tower for training once the war is over. It's so odd to think of the boy as a mage, of all things. Eamon has much to mourn and rebuild should he recover. But at least he could be thankful that both his son and wife are safe. I owe you my deepest thanks. I had nearly... I can scarcely believe Connor is the boy he once was. There is still the matter of Jowan. His poisoning Eamon began this whole mess, yet he lives. I must decide what becomes of him. We will hold him for Eamon to decide his fate. If he doesn't recover, Jowan's fate is sealed. What do you think? Yeah, I don't think it's your decision to make. What do you mean? He is responsible for many of the problems here, and is a Malefica as well. Yes, exactly. He's the Circle of Magi's responsibility. Perhaps you are correct. But that is Eamon's decision, not mine. I'm sorry. Jowan stays in the dungeon for now. But our task is not done yet. Whatever the demon did to my brother, it seems to have spared his life, but he remains comatose. We cannot wake him. The urn. The urn of sacred ashes will save Eamon. Isn't there some other way to heal him? What about magic? It has been tried and we will continue trying. Perhaps the demon's absence will make a difference. However, the relic is another option. My husband funded the research of a scholar in Deneran, a brother Genetivi. He has been studying the inscriptions on Andraste's birth rock. When Eamon fell ill, I sent the knights to speak to Genetivi. I hoped that he had finally discovered the location of the urn of sacred ashes itself. They were unable to locate Genitivi. In desperation, I sent more knights in search of the brother, or some clue of the urn's location. And what would you be doing in the meantime? I must organize Eamon's knights as they return, draft new soldiers, and prepare the army to fight. I shall hand Redcliffe back to Eamon when he awakens, and in a state where it can be of some use in the coming war. 
Truly, what other choice do I have? Um, yeah, I guess I have no other choice to seek out this relic. No one else can. Even if I wish to do it myself, I cannot abandon Redcliffe to its own devices. Perhaps you could seek out the brother's home in Denerim and see if any clues remain on his whereabouts. It is the only place to begin the search, I think. I must go to the hall and begin rebuilding. I wish you luck, and may the Maker go with you. Oh, before we continue too, anybody who's watching my Horizon Zero Dawn, if I didn't mention it already, that has been saved, and we will still be playing that on weekends that I have off. All right, here. And... Okay, codexes. So we got a few. Our Alyssa uh, is sold. For the one who delivers the sacred ashes of Our Lady will have esteem of Redcliffe and all the riches it is within my power to grant. The Arl of Redcliffe was a source of constant trouble of the Empire revealing during the occupation. It was rumored that since each new report sent to the Empire into a fit of violent rage. His court had taken poisoning messaging messengers before they could deliver their accounts. His soul's family was the tenth to be given this difficult task of the governing Redcliffe, and since most previous Arls had either murdered by their bands or beheaded by their the Empire, they did not approach the job with a great deal of enthusiasm. Isol met Eamon, not, real, not realizing he was the rightful heir to the father, father's domain, and quickly became smitten with him for being part of the resistance. Never mind that it was her family he was resisting. Perhaps a bit too romantic for her own good, she insists upon staying behind with Eamon when the rest of her family was driven out. And we know this already because this was part of the um, earlier episode. When her only son began to show signs of possessing magic, Isol tried to cover it up, knowing that he would be taken from her by the circle if found out. She hired an apostate mage to tutor him in secret, little knowing that her tutor, tutor was being paid to poison her husband. Eamon fell ill and Connor, desperate to try to use magic to save his father, magic that attracted the attention of a demon. The circle of magi were finally called in almost too late, and Connor was freed from the demon's power, though the damage to Redcliffe was severe. Alright, Connor Grenier. I feel like I'm sleeping, but I guess I'm not. While most of the bands and Arles of Ferelden carted their children with the them to the lands meet in the interest of eventually marrying them off. Connor has spent his entire life at Redcliffe, and it is hardly surprising that surprising that the child possessed the gift of magic. By law, he should have been taken to the Circle of Magic at the first signs, or sign, abducting him, abducting his claim to Redcliffe. Instead, the boy was kept out of the public view and his magic hushed up with disastrous results. All mages are beacons that attract the attention of the fate spirits. Because of this, they are trained and tested by the circle to ensure that they can withstand attacks from malignant fade creatures that seek entry into the waking world. Untrained Connor drew the attention of a powerful demon that tore the veil asunder. With aid from the circle, he was freed from the demon power. Connor will be sent to the circle tower where he will no longer possess a danger to the innocent. Um, so yeah, the, I have so many thoughts for this. Okay, so yes, you know, keeping your children masked from their gifts is not a good idea and the mages do need to be trained on how you know 
to control at a young age. But I don't think that there should be uh, chantry control over, you know, that kind of thing. And between the two parties, chantry has brainwashed both Templars and mages um, into their own will. And to say that they're only safe at, if they're taken at a young age to be trained up is absolutely ridiculous. Because if you think about it, um, if there were a school of Circle Magi to help the young children to control their magic, to teach them to not be so possessed, I think that would be a, a better way of handling things. And Templars, you know, being those security guards, um, not trying to, you know, overthrow mages or whatnot, but, um, and l later in DAI, we'll, we'll learn a little bit more. Um, but, you know, not feeding Templars uh, lyrium would probably be a good start from there. And, you know, they get these Templars um, from more of the Andrastians, the ones that are blindly... Um, in faith of the Chantry and Chantry beliefs. I think the Chantry um, used to start off as a good thing, but just like any kind of politicians or um, goals that are set, um, things need to be adjusted throughout the years. Um, things have to change throughout the years to accommodate different kinds of source of people, ideals, and stuff like that. And when you can't agree on things, this kind of stuff happens um, and war begins. But anyway, the first blight, chapter two. People today have little concept of the consequences of the second sin. Oh, believe me when I say that when they ask pious, chantry going folks will curse the use of foul magic, spitting and snapping their fingers. But none live today who actually remember the horror that was unleashed so long very long ago. Whatever the records might have existed regrettably, regrettably did not survive the chaos and ignorance that was to follow. We only have to take the tales of survivors handed down through the murky ages and the dogma of the Chantry to instruct us. And this is a pr precious little indeed. I believe I'm not understanding when I say that the second sin unleashed the bane of all life upon Thetis. The dark spawn are more vitreous than the worst plague, a heartless force of nature that came into our world like an ill wind. We know from uh, accounts of later blights as the dark spawn invasion came to be called. Never has a more appropriate name exists. The dark spawn spread their diseases and fame wherever they tread. The earth itself is corrupted by their presence. The sky rolling with anger, black clouds. I do not exaggerate, my friends, when I say that a mass gathering of dark spawn is an omen of dread a catalysm. It is said that those cursed ma magisters who became the first dark spawn scratched at the very earth to find solace in the darkness of the dwarven deep roads, and there in the shadows they multiplied, whether by intelligent design or some lasting vase of worship in their minds. They attempted to locate the old gods they had once served. They found what they sought, Dumont. First among the old gods, once known as the Dragon of Silence before the Maker imprisoned him, and all the brethren beneath the earth for the first sins. Sir, uh, usurping, sorry guys, the Maker's place in mankind's heart. The slumbering dragon awoke, freed from the maker's prison by the twisted followers, and became corrected himself. Dermot was transformed into the first archdemon. His great and terrible power given will by a rotting, unholy mind. With the dark spawn horde following, Dermot rose and took wing in the skies once again, 
burning runes to the world the maker had created. The old gods had become the eye of the storm that would revenge the entire world. From the tales of the destruction of Thetis by Brother Janet TV Chantley Scholar. I love Brother Janet TV. <laughs> he is like everywhere even if he's not with you. All right, possessed Connor. You. That looks, you still look You're possessed. You're the one who saved me. Actually, it was when. Then, I guess I owe her thanks. Father always said to remember to thank people who do nice things for you. I hope Father gets better soon. He will, won't he? He will if I have any say in the matter, which I do. All right. Eveline, Knight of Olay. Eveline was born to an Olesian farmer near the city of Hamsharal. In the early half of the Storm Age, she was a large and ugly baby and her father had hoped for a boy. Not waiting another, not wanting another mouth to feed, the farmer left Eveline in the woods to die from exposure. But a traveling band of Dalish elves came upon the crying child. The elves took her in to their clan and raised her as their own. They taught her archery, dueling, and survival skills. When she came of age, she was larger and stronger than most women, let alone elven women. Her adopted parents knew that she was a fine warrior, so they encouraged her to enter a human tournament in the nearby Manasamar, uh, but women were not permitted to join the knighthood in Olay, nor to complete in the tournament. So Eveline joined the tournament as a man. Her clan forged a suit of armor with a full helm and gave her an iron bark sword of the finest quality. Oops, too far. Uh, Eveline entered the competition claiming to be a knight of Antiva. She refused to doff her helmet even during the archery competition. And sure enough, Eveline bested many of the other knights until, in the Grand Melee, she came upon Keva, a knight who served the Empire and was considered the finest in the land. Keva was determined not to be beaten and struck swiftly and strongly. As Aveline matched each of his blows, Keva grew more frustrated. Finally, in desperation, he trapped Aveline and threw her to the ground. The blow knocked her helm from her head, and Keva was ashamed. He called to have the competition declared invalid, but the crowd booed and cheered and jeered. In anger, Kella turned and slewed Aveline as she was laying helpless. The son of the Empire, Prince Fran, was also present at the tourney. He too had been beaten by Aveline, but he recognized her skill and bravery and was saddened by the injustice of her death. Upon rising to the Empire seat in 744 Storm, Fran abolished the law that disallowed women from joining the Orlesian knighthood and postonomously knighted Aveline. Although women in Olay's knighthoods are still rarity today, all those who do become knights serve revere to Sir Aveline as their patron. Aveline, Knight of Olay by Francosis Mighty Mindy Who knows? Eight forty blessed. Okay. Ooh, I hit the wrong button. Okay. I believe we're done here. Uh, don't mind me, I'm eating a donut and coffee this morning, so. So if you hear me smacking, I'm sorry. Me my breakfast. Just sent kids Very well. to school, so. I'm going to start recording. Okay. 
so I'm pretty sure we don't need to go to camp, right? What we got for? Yeah. These things, yeah. Maybe we have some stuff here. I mean, we'll go. I shall do it. Well, to at least sell our stuff here. Now that we're back at the camp, I want to talk about what happened at Redcliffe. Um, you were there. You saw what happened. Yes, I know. I've had some time to think about it now. I just wanted to thank you. You went out of your way to save the Arles family, and you did it. Even though it would have been easier not to. There's been so much death and destruction. It... Well, it, it makes me feel good that at least we were able to save something. No matter how small. I owed the Isle that much. Um, if we can stop the blight, we'll save much more. You're right. Hopefully, by that time, there's still enough of Ferelden left to save. Good. Now that the warm, fuzzy part of the day is over with, we can get back to the ritual dismemberments. <laughs> oh, wait. It's not Tuesday, is it? Oh, yeah. So... Yeah, I don't think I have anything for you. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything for you either. Where are you at? 34. Okay. You have. Okay. Yeah, we're doing those. your strength though. Mm, I forgot to make sure Severin. Sovereign. Better than what we have on. Oh. Something you need? I'm sure either my boy or I can help you out. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected. And with your discount. And with your discount. Never used those. Do we need that? 
I don't think so. I think we needed it for uh, Lotharine, but that was about it. Okay. Alright. So, let's see. What's our next stop here? Yes. Yes. Indeed. So we're here. We've already taken care of everything here as of now. Oh, Miss Morg. Um. Here we're going. I like to get this done and over with. Fight. Oh. Sire, I have more news. You do? Um, yes. Well, it seems that the fighting has gone Enough. exactly as you... I would like to know what you intend to accomplish, Father. Should we not be fighting the Darkspawn instead of each other? The nobility should be brought into line and then the Darkspawn defeated. This is no true blight, Anora. Only Kalen's vanity demanded it be so. Beg pardon, sir. But blight or no, we may not have the manpower to face the Darkspawn soon. Kalen approached your legions for support, did he Never! not? Never! Marek and I drove those bastards out! We'll not roll out the welcome for them now. We need help, Father. We cannot deal with this crisis alone. Ferelden will stand on its own. I will lead it through this, Anora. You must have faith in me. Did you kill Kalen? Kalen's death was his own doing. Be careful. Now. Good job, crew. We get it? We got it. Okay. I shall do it. Me feel old, when And what exactly are you implying, Alistair? And that you're old. What? No, nothing. No, I just thought. <laughs> you just thought I might be an expert at feeling old and could share some sage advice. I, I just mean that I was a different person then. I believed him, you know, that it would be a glorious battle As you say, that we'd win. win. Oh, I did too. All a little bit younger the it last time done. we were here. Well, not you. You've always been. With lips like that, son, you'll be lucky if you live to be half my age. Right. Right. Okay. So, I'm gonna stop the recording here. Um, see where we're at and go from there. Um, with my new editing program, I can go over 30 minutes, and uh, that's uh, what I'm planning. I know that they're going to be long, but, um, yeah, we'll see what we can do, okay? We'll see you in a moment. Okay, guys, we still have some time here that we can... I wish I would stop pressing that button. Dark score! 
Oh, I yeah, ran away. Get the mage, get the mage, get the mage, get the mage, get the mage. I don't know, it just feels right. I shall do it. Long to find this here. Poured over by dark spawn and thick with their rot. It was his. Very well. I know. I feel it too. But he is not the first king to ever fall in battle. Or even the first to fall to the spawn. But this wound cuts deeper. And it will bleed longer. But we must keep moving. No doubt the Darkspawn are eager to give us plenty more reasons to mourn. Mm, yeah, they will. Alright. Well, the Anna. You can have that. Alright. Oh, Miss Morgan. I frankly don't know what she's talking at. here. Perfect. Uh, let's go open the mage's chest. Because so apparently I left it this time. Normally with so many mods I don't normally leave that see. but I did this time, apparently. Alright. Let's go for another fight, shall we? it was just me that numbled up or if it was dark spawn as well mm. we're gonna need that later in the game mm. 
Very well. It is begun. Oh, curiosity. Okay, no, so it was just me. Very well. Again. I shall do it. never get that trap either. I don't know why. Ah, oh, you move. be done. Go around it, go around it, go around it, guys. Good job. The Darkspawn have done their best to defile the bonfire where Duncan kept his nightly watch. Perhaps they sent something with Duncan's power. Yeah, something in the man's power. So it's true. He had convinced the forces of Orlais to ally against the Darkspawn. Empress Selene was merely awaiting his response. A response that never came. And now never will, thanks to Loghain's treachery. Never is a long time, Alistair. Give it time, and let cooler heads prevail. There will be peace between us yet. Well, I hope you live to see it, Wim. And I hope the Darkspawn don't. Uh, Alright, let's see if we can find it here. Notes. Oh, that's page three. Page one. Kaelin's documents, page one out of three. To His Majesty King Kaelin of Ferelden, my warden commander assures me that we faced a blight. This thing threatens us both, and we must work together to fight it, lest it do devour all. Our two nations have not had a happy history, but that is all it is, history. It is the future that it is at stake now. Let us put aside our father's disagreement so that we may secure the future of both our countries. My Chevrolet stand ready 
and will accompany the Grey Wardens of Olay to Ferelden. At your word, the might of Olay will march to reinforce the Ferelden forces. Sincerely, Empress Selene I. A official letter to Empress Selene I of Olay to Keen Callahan of Ferelden. Your Majesty, my men will arrive as soon as possible to bolster your forces. Make her willing the splight will end will be ended before it has begun. Callahan, I beseech you, as your uncle, not to join uh, the Grey Wardens on the field. You cannot afford to take this risk. Ferelden cannot afford it. Let me remind you again that you do not have an heir. Your death, and it pains me even to think of it, would plunge Ferelden into chaos. And yes, perhaps when it is over, you will allow me to bring up the subject of your heir. While a son from both the Tarn and the McTeer lines would unite the Ferelden like no other, we must accept that perhaps this can never be. The queen approaches her 30 years, and her ability to give you a child lessens with each passing month. Ooh, how sexist. I'm sorry. Okay, let's continue. Um, I submit to you again that it might be time to put Honora aside. We partly... We parted harshly the last time I spoke of this, but it has been a few years since I, the last time I spoke of this, but it has been a full year since then, and nothing has changed. Please, nephew, consider my words, and Andrassi's grace be with you. A letter from Arl Eamon to King Callahan, which, you mean he's got a point in the, these medieval times, you know, heirs were everything, but, you know, um yeah the uh, frankly the he has an air that he's losing um as we just came from saving connor uh there's no air for him and that's probably why he um leaves his post and gives it to his brother um it's one of the reasons or you know because of the tragic events, he could no longer stay there as well. I mean, the man goes through a lot. But to speaking of heirs, um, it, it has to be heartbreaking. Uh, this letter appears to be crumpled. Then carefully smoothed out and fold again. One moment. Lay down now. Stop barking at stuff. Come on. Lay down, Morgan. Down, please. Down. Lay down, please. Stop barking. You're probably out there barking at nothing. Or squirrels. I guess squirrels are nothing. Okay, I apologize, guys. Um, Callahan, the visit to Ferelden will be postponed indefinitely due to the Darkspawn's problem. You understand, of course. The Darkspawn have odd timing, timing don't they? Let us deal with them first. Once that is done, we can further discuss a permanent alliance between Olay and Ferelden. A note written in an uncharacteristically familiar tone from the Empress Selene I to King Callahan. Alright guys, um, that should be it. And then when we come back, we'll finish um, the return of Ostagar. Um, we'll see you on the next episode. Hope you enjoyed. I apologize for um, my dog in the background, me yelling at the dog. <laughs> um, but the, the dog and cat, the dogs and cats are the only children I have today, and I would like to get some recordings out. Um, we'll see you in a bit for Dragon Age Two. Talk to you later. Bye, guys.